In this video, we discuss the effect of pressure and temperature on solubility. Right, so we're trying to form mixtures uh, in which we're going to have a majority component, the solvent, and a minority component, the solute. And then uh, now we're going to examine how uh, the pressure and the temperature, the effect of the external conditions, would affect the solubility uh, of that solute in the solvent. Uh, all right. When we're trying to uh, mix a solid with a liquid or a liquid with another liquid, then the effect of external pressure has a very little uh, effect on the solubility of that liquid or solid in the solvent. However, uh, the external pressure affects uh, the solubility of a gas on a liquid because, of course, the external pressure, the partial pressure of the gas, controls the concentration of the gas. Right, so let's see if we can explain that with a diagram. Again, this will be your solvent. And now your solute is, is uh, some gas molecule, for example, O2. Right, so what you're trying to do is bring that O2 from the gas phase into the solvent, which might be, say, water. All right, and uh, it's uh, easy to see that uh, if you increase the amount of oxygen that you have on top of this liquid, then you have a higher chance to sol solubilize in that uh, uh, gas into the liquid. All right, so this is governed by uh, what we call Henry's Law, which tells you that there is a direct proportionality between uh, the partial pressure of that oxygen on top of the liquid and the amount of uh, liquid, of, of, of oxygen that you have in the liquid. As a matter of fact, uh, there's a direct proportionality of the vapor pressure or the pressure of oxygen with uh, the mole fraction of oxygen in that liquid. Okay, so Henry's law is like this. The pressure of oxygen on top of the liquid is going to be directly proportional uh, to the mole fraction of O2 in that uh, liquid. All right, so this is Henry's constant, and uh, if we do a unit analysis, if you put here the pressure of oxygen in, a in atmosphere, notice that the mole fraction does not have any dimensions at all, and then uh, this Henry's constant should also be in atmosphere. Okay, uh, those Henry's constants are known uh, for various solvents. Uh, uh, it actually depends on the solvent, and it also depends on the solute. Notice that the amount of oxygen that you can uh, dissolve in water is going to be different from the amount of CO2 that you could dissolve in water, even if you have the same pressure of O2 and CO2, or argon, or any other gas, right? So this constant depends on the uh, gas that you're trying to dissolve, it depends on the solvent, and it also depends on temperature, as we will see later on. Okay, but for now, we're going to do a numerical example to uh, see how Henry's law is applied. Uh, our calculation is going to be um, uh, the calculation of the mole fraction of oxygen uh, in water under uh, Earth's atmosphere. Right. So in Earth's atmosphere, atmosphere it turns out that uh, the pressure of oxygen is 0 0.21 atm. Right. So about 21% uh, of, uh, of our atmosphere is oxygen, so that means that the partial pressure of oxygen is about 0.21 atmospheres at sea level. Now, uh, Henry's constant for oxygen in water at 298 Kelvin is 4.34 10 to the 4 atms. And then, uh, from here, you can uh, easily solve what the mole fraction of uh, oxygen would be. And that mole fraction of oxygen is going to be very small, 4.8 10 to the minus 6. Right? What this means is that uh, for every million molecules of water, uh, you're going to have about five or so uh, molecules of oxygen itself. Okay, so there's not a lot of oxygen, but uh, we can take now this small fraction uh, of O2 in water and calculate the mass concentration, or, or uh, yeah, the mass concentration of oxygen in water. And this turns out to be uh, a value of about nine milligrams per liter. Okay, that is how much oxygen you would have dissolved in water under uh, 298 Kelvin in uh, Earth's atmosphere. And it turns out that aquatic life uh, only needs about 4 milligrams per liter. So notice that Earth's atmosphere provides almost twice as much oxygen as you need for uh, fish and plants to be able to live underwater. Okay? Right, so this is the effect of pressure on the solubility of gases. And again, we've said that uh, for the, the solubility of solids and liquids, pressure doesn't have much of an effect. Now we move on to explain the dependence of the solubility on temperature. 
Okay, so uh, here uh, you can actually see that uh, this uh, constant does depend on temperature. And for gases, it happens that this constant becomes smaller with increasing temperature. That means that uh, when you ele elevate the temperature, you can dissolve less gas than at uh, lower uh, temperature conditions. Okay? Now, when you dissolve solids and liquids, then the temperature dependence uh, is very erratic. Some solids dissolve more with temperature, but this is not universally true. There are some solids that dissolve less with an increase uh, in temperature. Okay? Uh, what is always true is that the rate at which a solid will dissolve is actually higher the higher the temperature it is. But the overall amount of solid or liquid dissolve in a solvent uh, uh, varies uh, uh, from substance to substance, and there are no general rules. All right, so let me wrap up this uh, video. In this video, we have examined how the pressure and the temperature affect the solubility uh, of solutes in solvent. Uh, for dissolving gases in liquids, we've seen that that is governed by what we call Henry's Law. And uh, we also have seen that while for gases, uh, the solubility decreases with increasing temperature. For solids and liquids, uh, it changes. There's no hard and fast rules.